The census records are available from 1790 to 1940. The records from 1790 to 1840 list only heads of household. Records from 1850 and 1860 list all individuals but do not show relationships. Records from 1870 to 1940 show relationships. There are almost no 1890 census records because they were destroyed in a fire. The 1790 to 1840 census records list only heads of households. The 1790 census records the number of white males under 16, the white males over 16, the total white females, and the number of slaves. The 1800-1840 census records both white males and white females into various age groups and then slaves. The information can be used to determine if the family has the correct number of people in the expected age group to be the family you are looking for. The 1850 and 1860 census lists all the individuals in a household but do not show their relationships. It shows the age, sex, color, occupation, and birthplace, whether they were married within a year or schooled within a year, and whether they can read or write, and the value of their property. The 1870 census has the names of the individual members, but not their relationships. It shows the age, sex, color, and occupation, property value. It shows the birthplace and whether the parents were foreign born. It shows the month born or married in the census year and whether a person can read or write or was eligible to vote. The 1880 census shows the name, color, sex, age, and the relationship. And for this, it's very useful. It also shows whether the individual is single, married, widowed, or divorced, the occupation, whether they can read and write, and the place of birth of the individual and his parents. The 1900 census has the street name and house number, the individual, relationships, birthplace, birth year, and the birth month. For this reason, it's very helpful in determining the exact uh, birth information. It also shows the color, marital status, and occupation, the mother of how many children and how many are living, the place of birth of the individual and their parents, and when they immigrated to the United States, and whether they're naturalized citizens, and also educational information. 1910 census shows the street name and house number, the individual's relationships and birthplace and age, the color, sex, marital status, years married and occupation, the mother of how many children and how many are living, the place of birth of the individual and the parents, and also when they immigrated to the United States and whether they're naturalized citizens, educational information, and whether they speak English. The 1920 census has a street name and house number, individuals, relationships, birthplace, and age, color, sex, marital status, occupation, the mother of how many children and how many of those are living, the place of birth of individual and parents, and the language spoken. When immigrated to the United States, whether naturalized citizens, educational information, and whether they speak English. To the 1930 census has a street name and house number, whether they live on a farm, whether they have a radio, the individuals, relationships, birthplace, age, whether they're a veteran, their color, sex, marital status, age at the first marriage, and occupation mother of how many children and how many are living, the place of birth of the individual and their parents, and the language spoken by all those. 
as when they immigrated to the United States and whether they're naturalized citizens, educational information, and whether they speak English. The 1940 census has the street name, house number, whether they live on a farm, the individual's relationships, birthplace, age, whether they're a veteran, color, sex, marital status, occupation, detailed information on employment and work status, the place of birth of the individual, and the residence on April 1, 1935. The 1790 through 1840 census records can be used to verify that a family resided in a certain location based on the name of the head of the household and whether the number of individuals in the various age brackets match the expected individuals in a family. The 1850-1870 census records can be used to verify individuals in a family if you have the relationship information from other sources. But you cannot positively tell whether all members of the household are necessarily from the same family and what their exact relationships may be. The 1880-1940 census records can be used to verify family relationships and birth information. The 1900 census provides the best birth information because it has the birth year and the month instead of just an age when the census was taken. The 1900 through 1920 census records help with marriage information because they show the years married. The 1900 through 1930 census records show the year of immigration, which is helpful for when looking for records of when the individuals came to this country. The 1940 census shows where they lived in 1935, which gives an additional snapshot where to search for information for people between the census records. So when looking at census records, here's a few cautions. The records are only as good as the information given to the census taker. In the best case, the index birth year may be plus or minus a year depending on when the birthday occurs during the year. In the worst case, some people appear to change their information with each census, sometimes drastically. And occasionally the names on the census can be totally incorrect.